Motor City Church. You already know. Welcome to our weekly podcast. Yeah, welcome back. Yes, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Thank you for holding it down. You're um, welcome. I don't. I mean, if you didn't get a chance to listen to last week's podcast or even last week's message, Ashley did a phenomenal job communicating from one of my favorite stories in Scripture of the gate beautiful and the miraculous power of God through normal people is great. Absolutely yeah, great. Thanks. So thank you. It was phenomenal. Yeah. I'm glad that you're back. You're not a hologram this week. No, it's good to be back. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, technically, you wouldn't know if I was. I mean, mean, yeah, that's true if it was done right. But he's not a hologram, folks. (laughs) No, no, I haven't reached Tupac status yet. Yeah. One day. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, (laughs) So anyway, (laughs) speaking of Tupac, (laughs) we're in a series on James. (laughs) (laughs) It's a great transition, (laughs) Ashley. You're a professional. I'm a professional. Yes, first week in James. And, uh, you know, spent all uh, Sunday going through four verses in James. I know. I love it. So we don't really go through just books of the Bible very often. What is some of the, what's some of the thought behind why it's a good thing to do every now and then? You know, James is one of those books that's foundational. Um, if somebody was going to ask me tomorrow, hey, you know, I've been saved walking through a new season, want to just develop a deeper relationship with the Lord, I, James would be one of those mm-hmm. books that you can almost pull out and hand to somebody, and they, by the time they're done, if they do the work of just kind of examination and study, they'll be better on the other side of it. So really, for no, I mean, just through prayer, we felt like it was time to maybe consider a book study for the summer. And uh, James came kind of to my heart. And I, I mean, the first four verses of James, if you just read through it, it's just so much. I'm like, yeah. all right, we might be here till <laughs> next summer. Yeah. So for you guys watching, at first we were like, we'll just do one chapter a week and this will be like a month long series. But um, that that's not what's happening. And I'm so glad because yeah. there was so much in those first four verses. And I'm still kind of thinking through really some of the illustrations that you preached about on Sunday that kind of connect to this idea of endurance and stability. Do you want to just like kind of briefly summarize? You don't even really have to summarize when it's four verses, what James says about the connection between those. Yeah, so James introduces this idea that we should count it all joy when we face trials of many uh, many kinds because at the end of those trials, it produces endurance. And endurance, when fully grown, produces the type of life. What he says is we can find this place of perfection where we need nothing. So he he promotes this picture of of almost a finishing in us that ultimately uh, I believe that what we see in Scripture is stability, Mm -hmm. that ultimately when our faith is tested and we can count that testing as joy and we are allowing our endurance to grow, that we can be the type of people who are, well, stable. And man, what an absolute message for where we're living today. If what the world needs can be summed up in one one word, it would be stability. Mm -hmm. Like the whole world is looking for stability. What is truth? Who am I? Where I come from? What role does God have in this all? All of those are questions that people ask when things are being shaken, and they Mm -hmm. are, absolutely. So James really does give us some insight right off the bat on how we can choose to walk through a journey that leads us to a plate of stability. Yeah, you talked about from your trip to Puerto Rico, these trees that you had seen that had grown out of stone, which it's hard for me to even imagine, to be completely honest, because I haven't seen that. (laughs) It doesn't seem like it would be possible. You probably have seen it. The problem is is that so many times where we see it is when we're on hikes or Mm -hmm. on the side of a mountain, and we're really not paying close attention But a a lot of times, specifically at higher elevations, a lot of those trees have no choice because even the levels of soil that are there are paper thin, and then it leads to rock and stone. And you have these mammoth trees being born out of rock and stone. So their root system kind of penetrates rocks. And kind of what I've learned through a little bit of study, because, you know, that's what I do on vacation, apparently. Yeah, I mean, why not? uh, Is that root systems will actually break apart soft stone, which is fascinating to consider the power of roots like that. But then also they will exploit any cracks in the rocks in order to kind of grab a hold and anchor onto. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just a fascinating picture. And what we learn about those trees is that on average, a tree that is... Um, anchored to a stone and has its roots set in the stone uh, grow slower 
but always and almost every time will outlive a tree that is settled its root system in soil, all things being equal, mm -hmm. same weather conditions, same type of environments, all things being equal, that tree anchored in stone will actually last longer, won't grow as fast, but will last longer. It's, just, it's such a powerful imagery. I love, one of my favorite things about God is how, as the creator of everything, there's so much that you can look at in nature that points to who God is yeah. and even is teachable for us. So that idea that it's slow growth, it doesn't necessarily look flashy, but if we're really anchoring ourselves in Christ, we can have that stability. It's powerful. Yeah, I mean, in, in the psalmist, the psalmist speaks about us anchoring ourselves to the stone, right? Mm -hmm. Like Jesus is the rock of our salvation, the shelter we run into, that we will not be shaken because we are anchored into the stone. So you're absolutely right. There is beautiful pictures and metaphors that are found not only through nature, but then scripture points us mm -hmm. to that if we do a little study and introspect, we'll find can really speak to who we are and where we're at. Yeah, it's like God knows what he's doing. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so to kind of take that and jump to your other illustration, I know I don't always like focus on these illustrations, but they were so powerful. You talked about the panda lady. Now, for those of you who don't know, go back and watch John's message. But there's also, you were saying, like a 30 and 30 about her. I think her. so, like, yes. A 30 and 30, uh, Sports Illustrated did a write-up on her. It's fascinating. And um, if you do watch, she's a lady who rides unicycles, not unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Um, <laughs> but she does, like, halftime shows and things where she rides a unicycle and then, like, catches plate symbols on her head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, that's nuts. Like, that takes a lot of work to I be mean, able to years. do that. It's, it's a skill that she picked up. Um, so she comes from a community uh, in China where a lot of circus acts are kind of perfected and kind of born out of. And that's really kind of what this community does. They're family of carnival acts, for lack of a better term. And this was her thing. She was going to learn how. Uh, she kind of took her act from a, ba a, a traditional Chinese balancing act and uh, took it to another level with the plates. And it is just, she has carved herself an incredible niche. Uh, the Golden State Warriors, for instance, just love this lady. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can go to those games and they cheer louder for her than they do for the team. Which is nuts because the team's pretty good. Yeah, just they are, especially that right now. <laughs> Steph Curry fan you. Yep. Um, but it's incredible. She puts the uh, plates on her, her, le her foot and she tosses them in the air and she catches them on her head all while balancing on a unicycle. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And yet she fails pretty often, right? She does. From time to time, she'll miss a plate. Um, Which, I mean, I would fail just trying to get on a unicycle. So I'm not judging, but just pointing out that even as good as she is, when your act is based on being on a unicycle, it doesn't matter how hard you're working. Yeah, because you can, you can, we even call it this, like if you've ever written a uh, unicycle, they, they don't say standing on a unicycle, you're balancing on a unicycle. And no matter how good or how many hours you put into it, you're never stable. You're just always juggling. Mm -hmm. it re that, I mean, that's, that's the picture, right? Like she's never stable. It, it's, it's always an attempt to kind of live with the instability and live with the juggling, but she's never fully stable. And unfortunately for so many believers, um, that's the picture of the faith that we've, we've painted. Like, it's kind of what we've internalized that we should aim for. Absolutely. Like work harder, try to balance all of these different things and do it well and drop them as little as possible. And when they do drop, like the objective is to just get back up there and rebalance again mm -hmm. because we have become really good with juggling and, and never really figuring out what it means to be stable. Um, I want to make sure that we're painting this properly. It's not that storms won't come. Mm -hmm. It's that when storms do come, I'd rather my feet planted, my roots planted into a rock than me sitting already trying to balance when there is no storm yeah. on the end of a unicycle. So it becomes a, 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 a picture that I believe that even James then communicates as this process of maturation. It's not just mm -hmm. James. Paul talks about it. Not just Paul, but uh, I mean, all over the place. The writers of Corinthians, Jesus talks about it. Like there is this process of maturation in us as believers that allow us really to set our roots deep. We don't have to become good at juggling. We can learn what it means to live in a place of stability. And then I think the good reminder there is it's slow. Yes. But it's still growth. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've, I'm excited because I feel like 
like James knew what he was doing to set up a whole letter with this idea and also that we're going to keep taking it slow going through this book and continuing to add on to this thought of what we learned this week. Do you have any idea? It's Monday, guys, so he may not exactly where we're going. No, I do. I okay. mean, there's a, well, there's look a, at that. There's a couple uh, passages that follow. Um, right off the bat, we get into issues of wisdom, mm -hmm. um, and we get into issues of finances, which, again, normally we kind of really uh, meticulous about scheduling our financial conversations um, around different seasons, but legitimately, as you walk through James, one of the first thing he addresses is the condition of our heart, and the thing he addresses as it pertains to a condition of our heart is finances, and I don't think it's an accident. So mm -hmm. that, I'm not sure if that's going to be this week or the week after, but there's just, because there's so much we're, we're trying to get through, but there is a ton, and, and I'm excited. Um, what I think we'll find at the end of this thing is that there's not there's not new um, store I'm looking for. So I think we're always looking for new uh, gimmicks. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I'm going to use a wrestling analogy, and this is going to be horrible. <laughs> it's okay. We um, know you. Yeah. So in wrestling, in the wrestling world, um, for those who kind of study it a little bit, there, there's a term called gimmick. Um, if Ashley was going to go and become a professional wrestler the next week. Which I'm not. The question would be, <laughs> Ashley, what's your gimmick? Like, what's your character? And we'd have to sit here and define. So it's kind of like building a brand. Building a brand, right? Um, it's not just in people, but it's also like, I don't know if you've ever seen wrestlers put other wrestlers through tables. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they say that that table is not a regular table. That table's been gimmicked, which means they've done something to that table that although it looks one way, it's actually going to function another way, and it's fake. Um, there is no fake way to deep growth. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear and be reminded in this series, I believe, of a lot of things that you might have known for years and have avoided because somebody told you, well, if you just do this new gimmick thing, you might attain the same level and depth. And the truth is, the more I read James, the more I'm reminded, oh, yeah, I really should have a committed relationship with the Lord that kind of moves out of my <laughs> prayer life. I really should spend more time studying the mysteries of the Lord that he's made available through his word. I really should become more accountable to a community of people. So it will be a gimmick-free series for sure. I like it. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm so we'll be right back here Sunday at 10 a.m. We would love to see you guys. In the meantime, have a great week. Have a great week. Thank you.